Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Charles Lawton and Elsa Lanchester in the sidewalks of London with Alan Marshall. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is an occasion in the Lux Radio Theater. In fact, whenever Charles Lawton appears, it's an occasion. I saw him first about nine years ago on the London stage with a young lady named Elsa Lanchester, who impressed me almost as much as he did. But she must have impressed Mr. Lawton even more because he married her. So tonight we have Mr. and Mrs. Lawton together for the first time at this microphone. A starring team like this would be a great event in any of the leading theaters of the world. In the Lux Radio Theater, such events are made possible by your support of our product, Lux Toilet Soap. And you have a reserved seat in the most comfortable chair in the house every Monday night. It's that reserved seat that automatically goes with your purchase of Lux Toilet Soap. Our play, The Sidewalks of London, is adapted from the picture which Paramount is just releasing, starring Charles Lawton and Vivian Lee. It's already scored a great success in England where it was produced. And incidentally, it was this picture that gave Vivian Lee her first important opportunity. Miss Lee, as you may have heard, later became Scarlett O'Hara in a picture called... Uh, uh, um, um, Gone with the Wind. Uh, yeah. The Sidewalks of London is a play about buskers, and that seems to call for an explanation. Buskers are stepchildren of the theater. They are entertainers who make a living by performing on the street instead of on the stage. When his performance is over, the busker passes the hat, and I suppose that's about the hardest school of acting there is, because if there's no applause, there's no salary. The Sidewalks of London is an off-stage, or perhaps I should say an off-sidewalk story, of two buskers who fall in love just as people in less exciting professions do. Now let's go behind the scenes of a sidewalk theater as we ring up the curtain on Act One of The Sidewalks of London, starring Charles Lawton as Charlie and Elsa Lanchester as Libby, with Alan Marshall as Harley Prentice and Claude Allister as Gentry. <laughs> London After Dark. An evening's entertainment is beginning in the street. The buskers are playing to the crowds which stand in line outside the theaters waiting for admission. In the alley, just off the Gaiety Theater, a singing busker nears the finish of his act. Just behind him, patiently waiting his turn, is Charlie. Charlie is an elocutionist, a reciter of poems. His clothes are ragged but clean. His face is lined with weariness but cheerful. As the singer ends his turn, Charlie steps into the street and sweeps off his cap with a graceful gesture. Ladies and gentlemen, I will now recite to you a poem first made famous by Bransby Williams, since recited on various occasions by Sir John Martin Harvey, Mr. John Gilgood, and myself. The Green Eye of the Little Yellow God by Milton Hayes. <coughs> There's a one-eyed yellow idol to the north of Kathmandu. There's a little marble cross below the town. Thank you very much, sir. There's a broken-hearted woman tends the grave of Mankaru. Thank you, madam. And that yellow god forever gazes down. He was known as Mankaru. Get off my foot, will you? By the subs at Kathmandu. He was hotter than they felt inclined to tell. Here you go. You leave that money alone. Get away from me. I saw you picking up my money. Hand it over now. Hand the it money over. I was lying in the street finding keeping blanket. Take your hands off me. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I shall resume my recitation in just one moment. Now you, hand it over. Do you hear? Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. There. Hand on the back. She got Ooh, away, I Charlie. Say. If I wasn't the next act, I'd catch her for you. Oh, I'll catch her all right. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I must ask you to excuse uh, this slight fracas. I do not stand here for my own enjoyment, so I will ask my friend Gentry here to collect any small tribute you may feel inclined to bestow. 
Thank you. Thank you. Go and get her, Charlie. Who I'll slap her in. Ladies and gentlemen, with your kind permission and attention, Gentry and Arthur, and myself and my partner, will give you our conception of London's latest song success. <laughs> Every time it rains, it rains, pennies from heaven. Don't you know it's market Coffee, hot coffee, coffee, hot coffee, hot coffee. Hello, doggy. Oh, hello, Libby. Doggy, I'll have a coffee, please, doggy. Oh, you will, eh? What with? You never have no money. Ah, I got sixpence. I got sixpence, see? Well... Where'd you get that? Oh, I found it in the street. Here. Who are those two, doggy? Them at the end of the counter. That one in the funny hat, he's an American newspaper man. Oh. He's showing the Englishman a bit of London. Oh. And the other one? Him in the tail. Oh, he's got a smile, hasn't he? What's his wonderful name? His name's Prentice. I think he's Harley Prentice, the songwriter. The songwriter? I've got to speak to him. Now, Libby, don't disturb the customers. Here, you... <laughs> Are you a songwriter? Yes, I am. Ever sold any? Yes, a few. My name's Harley Prentice. This is my friend, Mr. Strang. How do you do? Hello. I didn't catch your name. I'm Libby, from Liberty, from the Statue of Liberty. (laughs) Really? And what do you do? I'm a dancer, I am. And I recite, like to hear me. There's a one-eyed yellow monster to the north of Kathmandu. There's a little uh, something cross below the town. There's a broken-hearted woman. Oh, all right, all right, all right. I've got you now. Yeah, take your hands off Stealing me. my sixpence and reciting my poems, eh? You go. Oh. You and me's got to have oh. a talk. Just a moment, please. What's this girl done to you? What she done or what she not done is my affair, see? Here. Now, you look here. Look here. Now, look here. What? You look here to me, mister. I don't stand for interference, not from nobody I don't see. Now, look here, young woman. Just a moment. Now, uh, now we've all looked everywhere. Let's uh, just relax and have a cigarette, shall we? Smoke? It's very kind of you, sir. Uh, that's a very pretty cigarette case, sir, if I may say so. Thank you. Uh, smoke, Miss Liberty? Don't mind if I do. Give us a light. <laughs> yes, rather. Come on, Harley, let's get going, shall we? No passion, please. Just wait till I pay the bill. Well, I'll be going, too. Good night. Thanks for the cigarette. Here, you... Come back. Good night, Miss Liberty. Well, did anyone happen to see what I saw? What? See what? Oh, nothing, nothing, just nothing, sir. Good night, all. Good night. Hey. What's he chasing after her again for? I... Oh, Strang. Yeah? Well, it's just a coincidence, probably, but my cigarette case is gone. Stop, 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 you hear? I've got you, stop. Well, what do you want now? You know, sorry to disturb you and all that, but I'll have that cigarette case, please. What? I saw you took it right off the counter. I'd be obliged if you'd explain what you're talking about. Oh, dramatic, aren't you? That's a very good pose. Yes, you've got the right idea, but you keep that for an audience, see? Come on, hand it over. I won't hand over nothing. Mm. I don't know what you You won't, eh? You're you don't say, then. Oh. Hand it over. Yeah. That's better. <laughs> well, it's a good thing he's got his name in it. Oh. So you're after the reward. I see. Oh, you've got a nasty, cheap little mind, haven't you? Well, so long. And when the cops get onto all this, don't you call on me as a witness to character. Yeah, just a minute. Look here, mister. Who does this lovely world belong to, eh? To the people who live on it, am I right? Well, I'm one of them. I got just the same tastes as all the rest. You'd be surprised. I get hungry. I get thirsty. I get cold. I enjoy a smoke and a permanent wave, and why shouldn't I have them? Because you haven't earned them. Did anyone ever give me the chance? An institution brought me up and gave me a job washing dishes, but I cleared out of that in double time, and why? Because it ruins the hands, see? I've got just as much right to a manicure as the next. Why not? Don't talk foolish. Why not? Why not? Can't you answer? (laughs) There ain't no answer. You're after justice and logic. But there ain't no justice and there ain't no logic. The world ain't made that way. Everything's luck, see? And good temper. And if you can take a joke. The whole of life's a joke. A joke? Then it's a joke I can't take, see? I can't take it. I can't. 
Hi, 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 hi. Now, now, now. Hysterics don't help. Listen, my girl. Yeah. Don't you touch me. Whew. That's the second time you've lambed into me. And I don't like it, see? So stop it, dear me. Stop it. I'll have the law on you, I will. I'll tell them what you've done. I'll get you ten years. You let me go. Shh. Hey, listen, listen, listen. Here, let me go. Stop it, dear me. Stop it. Don't you hear that? The cops. Cops, cops, do you see what you've done now? Oh, cops. Don't stand there gawking. We'll have to run for it. Yes, come on, come on, get out of there. What place is this? Where are you taking me? Well, you had no other place to go, did you, except with the cops if they'd caught us? I still want to know where you're taking me. Will you be quiet? Everybody's asleep. Well, here we are. Go on in. Is this... Is this where you live? Be it ever so humble, there's no... Well, there's no place like it, is there? Wait a bit. I light the gas. Of course, it's a little short on furniture, and it ain't much on conveniences. But like I always say, <laughs> conveniences is the things you can do without. <laughs> Most conveniently. <laughs> I'm, uh... I'm snug in here, ain't I? Maybe you can tell me what I do now. You're so clever. You take the high road and I'll take the low road. I asked you what I was to do. And I answered you. You take the high road. That's the bed over there behind those curtains. And I'll take the low road, being this armchair here. Now go on and go to sleep, because that's what, I, what I'm going to do right now. Oh, well... <clears throat> hey, and turn out the gas when you've done, if not before. I'll consider your problem in the morning. Uh, pleasant dreams and sweet repose. Hey, and don't snore, see? I don't snore, see? Well, don't then. Good night. <laughs> Good morning. Did you sleep all right? Yeah. i just been down to get the milk. I could hear you singing from the street. You dance too, eh? Yeah. Well, your breakfast is there on the table. Go and eat it. I've had mine. Hey, where did you learn to dance? I never learned, see? I never learned anything. I see. Just go on with your eating. I've got work to do. What's that? This, this is a sewing machine. What are you sewing? This, this is the hem of Ma's skirt. She's the landlady here. <laughs> you got the hiccups. Never seen a man do sewing before. <laughs> well, you'd see a lot of things in the Navy you hadn't seen before. Navy? You were in the Navy? That's right, that's me, Navy Cut. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? It's me, Julian. It's all right, it's only Julian. It's the landlady's little boy. Oh. What do you want, Julian? Mother says... Have you turned up a skirt yet? You come back in half an hour, Sonny, see? Can't I see a little boy? Oh, no, no. My little boy's asleep now. I want to see a little boy. Are you up it, Sonny? Up it. Get downstairs with you, will you? What do you mean, your little boy? Oh, he means Robert. He lives over there in the trunk. Here, bar me. Not me. Here, look. <laughs> see? There's my little boy. He's a ventriloquist's dummy. I used to be a ventriloquist before I took up the, uh, classics. Here, yeah, watch. Good morning, Grandfather. I'm not your grandfather, little boy. Liar! How's that? Do you mean to say you ever managed to fool an audience with ventriloquists? No, 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 no. They aren't all as smart as you. Pooh, I never let anyone fool me yet. No? All right. Well, come on. I'll leave the skirt with Ma... On our way. On our way where? Police station. Police? Police station? What's up? Oh, Phil, you couldn't be such a rotten sneak. Not after letting me sleep here and giving me breakfast and me believing in you. Oh, what'll I do? Oh, what'll I do? Now what's all the excitement? What do you mean? What do you mean? Aren't you going to turn me in? I can't fool you, can I? Oh, no. <laughs> you silly little thing. We're only going to hand the cigarette cases at the police station just as if we'd found it. 
took you in proper, eh? Cool. Yeah, what did you do it for? Now, look here, no offense, mind you, but I thought you needed a lesson. Can't have you constantly pinching cigarette cases, you know. Come on. Just a minute, Charlie, just a minute. Morning, Pa. This is Pa, he's the landlord here. Well, how long has this woman been here, may I ask? Here, who are you calling woman? I'll not have it, nor my wife won't have it. And I'll thank you to hand over a skirt. He'll hand it over when he's been paid for his work, see? Now, Libby, Libby, this has nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with me? Poking his long nose into our affair? Look here, young woman. Look here, old man. We can't have a brawl in front of a lady. A lady? That's what he said. Lady. I'll have you ejected. Oh, you will, will you? Yes, I yeah, will. Yeah, 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 yeah. Libby, yeah. Libby, get inside the room. Go no, on now. Go no, on. No, I won't. Here, how dare you lay a finger on me? Will you go no, in or... leave me alone. Get in there, will you? Here. Let me go. Will now, look here, Pa. I here. won't look here. Yeah. Now, what's all the big noise for? Good morning, Ma. He had a woman in his room. I have a woman in my room. I had a woman in my room, and I shall have a woman in my room. Now, look here, Ma. Have you ever known me do the Don Juan act? Let me out! Now, well, then, what I got in there is uh, my new leading lady. Oh, she's breaking the place up. Well, she sings like a robin, and she dances at... Not over my head, she won't. I say, Ma, dear old Ma, please let her stay. She's got no place to go, poor little kid. And... Well, I'll put her in with one of the children until I have a room free. You do that for me, Ma. <laughs> and I'll give Julian elocution lessons. I'd better go in now and calm her down a bit. Here, 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 here. What's going on in here? Here, you let me out of here. Uh... Let me out. Where's my hat? Now, look here. <laughs> You don't want no hat. Go away. You can't keep me here against my will. You can't. <laughs> oh, I see. You're a silly little coot, aren't you? Come on now. Stop it. No one's keeping you here unless you want to stay. Here now, look here. You're grown up, you are. You've got to behave, you know, if you want us to be friends. Oh, what's the matter now? Oh, I'm sorry I broke your thing. I'm sorry I stole your sixpence. I'm sorry I made a mock of you. I'm sorry, you silly fool. I'm sorry. All right, then, you're sorry. Hey, hey, now stop it, stop it, see. Hey, you'll cry yourself all puffy. I've got a mirror. No, I haven't got a mirror, but I've got a frying pan. Come here. Hey, I don't use this frying pan for cooking. I keep it for shaving purposes. Can you see yourself in it? Uh, That's more like it. More like what? More like my leading lady. Your leading lady? Well, well what are you talking about? I said it, leading lady, didn't I? You've got personality and temperament. And I think you've got talent. I don't mind saying I consider your promising. We have the experience. All we want now is the new turn. You... You want to work with me? Give me a job? Well, why not? You'll have enough to eat. That's important, too, in its own little way. I'll get you a room here. I'll fix it with Ma. You can stay here and work as long as you want. That is, uh, if you want. If I want. If I... Of course I want to be a leading lady. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear me. Now, look here. Hey, hey, look here, look here, look here, look here. Oh, ain't there a lot of things to make a woman cry? Oh, dear, dear, dear. <laughs> In just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Charles Lawton and Elsa Lanchester, will return to bring you Act Two of The Sidewalks of London. Now let's listen in for a moment on Martha, a Hollywood secretary, and a newly arrived friend from back home. You mean to say you actually know all those gorgeous stars? Sure I know them. Carol Lombard and Claudette Colbert. My. And... Are they as pretty off the screen? I should say they are. Gee, you're lucky. And say, you know, I think Hollywood agrees with you. Honestly, you seem to have gotten prettier yourself since you've been out here. Well, thanks, Sally. I've been taking better care of my complexion. 
That's one thing a girl learns to do fast out here in Hollywood. You mean you take care of your skin the way the screen stars do? Can you afford it? Why, of course, silly. And anyone can afford it. Do you know nine out of ten screen stars use Lux soap? There's a wonderful active lather facial Claudette Colbert says she takes every night. Golly. Will you show me how to take it, too? Sure, I'll show you. It's easy as pie. I take a Lux soap active lather facial every single night, no matter how tired I am. Oh, gosh, Sally. The other night I was at the Trocadero with Bill. And later on at bedtime, Martha shows Sally how the Hollywood screen stars she admires take an active lather facial with Lux soap. First, you work up a nice, rich Lux soap lather in your hands and work it in lightly, sort of up and around, like this. Then you rinse it off with warm water, like this. Then a dash of cold water. Then pat very lightly to dry your face, like this. And then you can just feel how nice and fresh and smooth your skin is. It's really grand, and it's so good for your skin. Yes, ladies, it's easy to take an active lather facial every night. And it's wise. You know, many a woman, without realizing it, is actually spoiling her own looks, allowing her pores to become choked because she doesn't remove stale cosmetics, dust, and dirt thoroughly. And that's what causes those unsightly little blemishes and enlarged pores that mean cosmetic skin. Lux Toilet Soap's active lather does a thorough job. You can use cosmetics all you like. But let Lux Toilet Soap help you keep the kind of skin you should have. Lovely to look at, soft to touch. If you'll get three cakes of Lux Toilet Soap, that's the economical way to buy it, and try active lather facials for 30 days, you'll see for yourself what this care screen stars use can do for you. Now our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of The Sidewalks of London, starring Charles Lawton as Charlie and Elsa Lanchester as Libby, with Alan Marshall as Holly Prentice and Claude Allister as Gentry. stress and turmoil of a busker's existence leave little time for sentiment. But gradually, as Libby becomes a familiar figure in the shabby rooming house, she also becomes the most important item in Charlie's life. Today is Charlie's birthday, and Libby's baked him a cake. She's just finishing the greeting in tempting letters of pink icing as Charlie knocks at the door. One second. Don't come in yet. What are you up to? Don't come in till I call you. What are you up to in there? There. You can come in now. I should hope so. I mean, so... <laughs> hey, here, I say, what's all this? Many happy returns, Charlie. <laughs> cool. There's a say. cake for you. See? I baked it. Here, read <laughs> what it says. <laughs> Many happy returns to Charles. Forty. <laughs> I ate forty. I'm thirty-nine. Uh, how did you know it was my birthday? Oh, I was looking through your papers and I found your birth certificate. Oh, much obliged, I'm sure. <laughs> Look, I bought you a present, too. See? Oh. Yeah. Look, a nice tie. Oh, it's very pretty. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, put it on. Oh, I don't like to. Here, give it to me. <laughs> I'll do it. Silly, now, silly, now. Hold still. There. <laughs> that, that does it. Now, look at yourself in the frying pan. <laughs> like it? Well, it makes me look a bit yellow. Hello, any admittance? Hello, Gentry. What's going on here? Come in, Arthur and Gentry. It's my birthday. Birthday? Well, I never. Many happy returns, Charlie. Thank you, Gentry. Many happy returns here, too. Thank you, Arthur. Who? Oh, I, I never knew. Anyone else would have given anyone else a note. If we'd only let Charles get to his own cake, please. That's right. See, come on, everybody. Sit down. Are, Let's Charles. Try. Here's a knife. Hey, I say, what a cake, eh? What a cake. <laughs> what a cake. <laughs> what's, what's it say? <laughs> Many happy returns to Charles. Forty. Forty? You? Oh, you're getting middle-aged. You are, really. <laughs> I ain't forty. I'm thirty-nine. Wait a minute. You can all sit there looking as stuffed as you like. But the new turn would be a sensation. I feel it in my bones. Quite likely, old boy, but my individuality may be swamped in an ensemble. Nowadays, the individual's washed up. 
Cooperation, that's the stuff. So I says to myself, there's young gentry busking on his own and poor old Arthur busking on his own. What we need is a troop. Tell him my idea, Charlie. You tell him. Well, um, we, we form a quartet and we do a big production number. We thought we'd call ourselves the cooperators. Yes. Well, mm-hmm. we might be good at that. Uh, what about music? Yes. Oh, uh, well, uh... Oh, I know. Diner. No, no, bicycle made for two. Uh, how about no. the Tipperary? No, no, no. Those are classics. Uh, can't we have something modern? Uh, something with a swing to it? Well, uh, tell them your idea, gentry. <laughs> well, I, I, I had thought of a little composition of the own. Oh, you mean that thing you're always playing, um, Liza? That's right. Let's try it with the push box, gentry. Right, Al. Here we go now. Have you ever seen a Liza? Have you ever seen a smile? A lovely was a gal. Everybody smell. Strike me think you she ain't in the style. All the blokes will dance with Liza. Gaze into a Liza. Blue. Every night and day, you can hear them saying, Liza, I love you. Have you ever seen a Liza? Uh, hey, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Hello, Ma. Charlie, there's a gentleman to see you, Mr. Harley Prentice. Mr. Harley Prentice. Good evening. Oh, Mr. Prentice, ain't it, who lost the cigarette case? Yes, I'm uh, awfully sorry to break in like this. Uh, I only got back to town yesterday and found that you'd returned it to me through the police. I just wanted to thank you. Didn't you wonder at not hearing from me before? Oh, no, no, so people don't trouble, gloves and such. I had to leave this address for my bona fides. Oh, yes, well, um, I suppose I'll give you a little something for your trouble, if uh, five pounds? I'd rather not, sir. I mean uh, the circumstances. You mean the girl? The girl, sir, I don't quite take your meaning. Your cigarette case was found under the counter, sir, after you left. Oh, I I see. Come on, Charles, I've got a new step. We're working it into the song. Good evening, Miss Liberty. Oh. Oh. Pleased to meet you again. I I came to thank this gentleman for returning my cigarette case. Oh. Had you dropped it? Uh, uh, yes. Won't you come in? We're rehearsing. We've got a new song. I don't suppose it's anything in your line. Now, Libby, you mustn't waste Mr. Prentice's valuable time, It's all right. Mr. Prentice, it's a pity you didn't bring your journalist friend along. Now, now, Libby, Libby, Libby. Oh, well, he might have given us the write-up. Well, so might I. What? Oh, oh, you don't mean to say you could use an interview? I'd be very happy for one. Oh, Charles, he wants an interview. Now, um... Who's to give it? You or me? Oh, come on in, come Libby, on. Libby, I don't think we ought to yeah, bother Don't Mr. be Prentice. silly, Charlie. Come right in, Mr. Prentice, and meet our company. I know you're going to... Now, let me see. Um, are you taking all this down, Mr. Prentice? Oh, every word. Oh, don't miss any. Now, ever since my early childhood, I had an intense desire to express myself. And I shall have my greatest opportunity when our troop, the cooperators, put on a new show at the Holborn Empire next Monday. Monday? I'll be there. Libby, 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 the gentlemen don't understand. We're dancing outside the theatre, so we're not inside. He knows, but you needn't put that down, Mr. Prentice. Now, read me what you've wrote. Well, um, Miss Liberty, um, Liberty what? Just Liberty, like Garbo, see? It goes better on a billboard. It's the first I've heard of all this. Miss Liberty, uh, Liberty, as she prefers to be called, will not always be content with the life of the streets. Is that the line? That's the line. My ambition is to dance in every capital in Europe, starting with the Hoban Empire. Oh, the blokes will dance with Liza, gaze into her eyes of Every night and day, you can hear the same I love you. Ladies and gentlemen, any little token with which you would like to reward our little presentation will be most gratefully received. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, madam. Dear Libby. Oh, Mr. Prentice. Hello, I loved your act. Oh, I'm so glad. Libby, uh, there's some people over there in my car. I'd like you to meet them. Who are they? Well, they're friends of mine. Uh, Lady Selina, for one. Lady Selina? 
A lady? No, thank you. Now, Libby, please. I'm giving a party tonight, and I want you to come and dance for us. What? For you and your fine friends to make fun of? Thank you for nothing. Well, don't be such a snob. I'm asking you to give a professional entertainment. Professional? Oh. Will you come? Please. I'll get there. I'll get there somehow. Good. All right, now, move along, move along. All right, Constable, all right, all right, all right. It's all the right. cops. Oh, oh, they've got Charlie. Can't a man make an honest living anymore? Move along. You want me to run you in? Beggars, that's what you are. Now, look here, don't Charlie, you talk to me like that. I won't have you. With stay him. out of this, you little beggar. I'll run you in, too. You will not. Libby, Libby, don't. All right, Constable, we're leaving. Come on, Libby, come out of this. Don't talk so much. Come on, come on. There you are. Three beers. Drink up, Arthur. Drink up, Gentry. You're very good ill, Charles. Thank you, thank you. Nothing for you, Libby. No, thanks. Well, happy days, happy days. And a very good night tonight, too, taking it by and large. I wouldn't ask for better support from a better company. Here, here. here. Well, here's to busking. Past, present, and future. Gentlemen, ladies, Charles, gentlemen. stop making a fool of yourself. Would Shall you I tell you something? You may. Ten years from now, there won't be a busker on the street. What do you mean? Just because you took a few shillings tonight, you think everything's lovely. Well, it ain't, see? What do you suppose it means, the cops always moving you on? I'll tell you, they're, they're trying to get us off the streets altogether. Yes, I'd like to see them. You'll have your wish. Nobody wants us, really. They laugh at us. You hold your noise. I won't. You're living in the past. You heard that cop, he called us beggars. And he was right. Tonight's cured me. Good night, Charlie. Here, I'm the manager. You're a member of my troop. Come here and sit down. Good night, all. Oh, insubordination. I see. Charlie? Yes, Ma? What you sitting up so late for? Libby ain't home yet? Well, it's early yet. She'll be in. Go to bed, Ma, dear. After all, it's my job to wait up for her. And why is it your job, Charlie? Well, uh, uh, I mean, Ma, she has to have some man to look after her, hasn't she? Of course she has. Some young fellow of her own age to take her about to dances and parties and things. Why shouldn't I sit up? Oh, you know well enough, Ma. I'm fair wrapped up in that kid. That's why. A man of 40 ought to have more sense. I ain't 40. I'm 39. That's right. You told me last year. I'm 39. Not. Well, here we are. Thanks for the nice evening. You're very welcome, Libby. I'm afraid I can't ask you in, Mr. Prentice. Well, good night. Congratulations. So what? Success story, chapter one. Success story? Yes, they liked your dancing tonight. That fellow I introduced you to, Hackett, he liked you very much. He's a, he's a rather important producer. He is? Well. I'll speak to him tomorrow. Well, good night. Wait. I want to thank you. Oh, you don't owe me any thanks. But I, I just want to tell you I'd like to. Well? Well? I don't usually kiss gentlemen when they bring me home. Oh, I'm sure you don't. I might make an exception, though, if you'd like. I would like very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's late. Good night. Night. Charles. Where have you been? Dancing. Here, yeah, you don't get out of it like that, you don't. What do you mean stopping out all hours, keeping Ma up and me up? Who asked you to sit up? I never asked you to sit up. A light woman, that's what you're turning into. But I won't have it, see? Not if I have to lock you in. Oh, shut up. Come here. Leave me alone. Now, we've got to have a talk, Libby. I'll talk to you in the morning. It is morning. Here, you let me go, see? You're drunk. I ain't drunk, and I'll clear out when I know where you've been. I've only been out with Mr. Prentice. I'm sorry you sat up. Really, I am. But he asked me to his party. Yes, he did. 
What do, what do you mean? Party me I, party of two. You say that again and I'll smack your face. Libby! Are you telling me the truth? Why, Charles, of course. Well, look here, I'm sorry, Libby, but you didn't ought to have gone off like that. All that stuff you talked and then walking out on me. Well, Libby, it is more than flesh and blood can stand. But I've been out late before. Well, it's the last time we've got to have a totally new arrangement. You in this room and me upstairs, Libby, that ain't sense. I lay awake at night, Libby. It all goes round in my mind. The new turn and you and you and the new turn Charles, and the new turn and you. there ain't going to be any more new turns. What did you say? I'm going on the stage. The producer and Mr. Prentice is fixing it all up. I told you I'd get there. I told you. Oh? And what happens to me and Arthur and Gentry? You never thought of that, did you? Well, why should you? Look here, Charles. You always said I could act. And now don't stand in my way now. I've got the chance of a real job. After all, busking's only fooling. Are you telling me I spend my life making a fool of myself? Well, in a way. See, old lad, if we were any good, we'd be in the theatres, not outside of them, begging for coppers. Better than pinching them. You, you throw that up at me? How long have I been working with you? Ever known me cheat you once since? How can I be sure? Get out. Get out. I won't get out. Get out. I've a right to be heard. Get out. Listen, you. Here. I'm telling you to shut up and listen. I'll call it can't do any harm to listen, can it? Libby, 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 I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Let me go. I won't have you going away, no. Libby. Li Libby, Libby, I wasn't hurting you. Listen, will you, please? Libby, I want to marry you. Will you get that? What? That's right, dear. I want to marry you, you see. Have you gone out of your mind? I mean... <laughs> I mean... You'd better look in the frying pan, hadn't you? Libby, Libby, oh, what's the matter, oh, darling? Oh, it isn't wrong in here. What's up, Charlie? Oh, what's up, Libby? He won't let me alone. The things he says. I think he must be loony. Here, come on, Charlie. You come along with us, Charlie. That's it, Charlie. Come and have a good rest. Now we have got it clear. First I'm drunk, then I'm loony, then I'm told to lay down an ash because it seems I'm only a beggar. So it don't really count what I say or do. The partnership's off, Gentry, and that goes for you too, Arthur. It's off, smashed, finished, washed up. We can all starve, and who cares? Our leading lady's got a new job. So I'll get a new job. Outside, Buskin. You think I can't do a man's day? I'll show you. I'm a man, I am. That some of you think it funny, I have to say so. I think it funny myself. I'm fed up with the humour of it. Dear old Charles, good old Charles, Yes, he's good enough to fetch and carry, good enough to feed the cat when the rest of you can't spare the time, but when it comes to give and take, work and play, man and woman, and it's good morning to you, Charles. Keep on your own side of the street, the gutter side. All right, but it's I who's saying good morning, see? Good morning. Good morning to you all. The curtain falls on Act Two of The Sidewalks of London with Charles Lawton and Elsa Lanchester. Now for just a moment, let's tune in our imaginary sound ray on one of the homes the Lux Radio Theater has had letters from. This time it's a small apartment in Westchester, just outside of New York. Please be good, Betty. Mother has to have her bath, too. Now, just stand still while I dry you, please. Put that horn down. <laughs> Come on, now. Into your pajamas so you'll be all in bed when Daddy comes. Oh, no, Betty, not now. Mummy has to have her bath, too, and it's getting late. This young wife is much too clever to let her husband find her after his hard day. Worn, cross, disheveled. So now... She draws her warm Lux toilet soap bath and relaxes in it for a few delicious moments. The active lather of this fine complexion soap caresses her skin, carries away perspiration, every trace of dust and dirt. She knows this soothing beauty bath will relax and refresh her, leave her skin feeling smooth and fresh, fragrant with a nice, delicate perfume that clings lightly about her. A fresh frock and perhaps a flower in her hair will complete the transformation. And when her young husband arrives... Well, let's listen in. Hello, dear. Have a good day. You look swell. 
fresh as flowers. <laughs> How about a little kiss? Oh, gosh, darling, you're sweet. Clever women all over the country are adopting the screen star's way to make sure of daintiness, of skin that's sweet. A daily Lux toilet soap bath is a luxury that you'll enjoy, a luxury that isn't the least extravagant. Buy Lux toilet soap the economical way. Get three cakes tomorrow. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act three of the Sidewalks of London. Gone from the rooming house, Libby walks the starlit path of fame. Show after show, hit after hit, until the name Liberty on the marquee is another way of saying success. Charlie has left the rooming house too, but his road follows the dark alleys and foggy bypaths of the back streets. No longer is his husky voice heard reciting the classics. No longer does the tattered cap pass through the crowd begging favors. Charlie has disappeared and is all but forgotten. Now in a richly furnished apartment, Libby and Holly Prentice run over the music for their latest show. Wear a straw hat in the rain. Be sure you're not complaining. Laugh when it's raining. I can't get it. It's just not there. Oh, well, don't get excited. Oh, listen, my sweet. We've got a play opening, Straw Hat in the Rain. I've got everything, the book, the actors, the scenery, everything except a decent tune for the lead song. What do you think, Libby? Is it as bad as I imagine? Uh-huh. No, it's not so bad to sing, but... I'll never be able to dance to it. What we need, darling, is something, you know, you know, like the thing I dance to in the streets. Oh, um, you mean that... That's it. Something like that. Uh-huh. But, Libby, this is a street song. I don't think it has... Oh, wait a minute. Wait. There. You see? The rhythm's exactly right. Quiet, <laughs> darling. We've got it. Here it is. Oh, you're marvelous, you mean. We'll use it for the finale. <laughs> Libby, I adore you. Now there, now there. No loitering at the stage door. Move on there. Now, move on and no talk about it. Hi there, you. Get away from that stage door. Are you talking to me, officer? Yes, I mean you. Go on. I just want to see Miss Liberty, that's all. Well, you can't. She wants to see me, I know she does. I'm a manager and a friend of hers. Yes, you are. Now, move along or I'll run you in. There she is, Miss Liberty. Liberty! Libby! Get back there, I said. Let me go, Libby! Oh, then you come along with me. Yeah, you let me alone, Libby! Won't come, everyone... eh? Won't come. Resisting arrest, eh? That's right. That's done it. Striking an officer, eh? Sergeant! <laughs> Sergeant! Order. Order here, order. Next case, please. Charles Saggers, drunk and disorderly, resisting arrest, striking an officer. Are you Charles Saggers? Yes, sir, I am. You seem very proud of it. Well, sir, not to trouble you with my life history, I was born in a circus, but I preferred the classics. I'm a professional reciter, see? Would you like to hear me? What will you have? Amlet, green eye, if... If you can keep your head, when all about you are losing theirs and blaming that's it on enough, you... That's enough, that's well, enough, that's enough. Well, that, that, that's my bona fides, Your Worship. Is there anything known about this man? Well, sir... Well, uh, sir, <laughs> there's no denying it. Convictions have mounted up something awful. Twenty-four, all told. Only nineteen, Your Worship. Hmm. Only nineteen? Oh, I see, you're not reckoning the admonishments. <laughs> <laughs> quiet, quiet. Have you any explanation to give as to why you were hanging about the theatre, drunk? Oh, well, sir, why not? I mean, there she was inside and there I was outside. 
Of course, I knew she had it in her from the start for all her swank. So I came back at the end just to watch her. And watching her, I realised for the first time that I'd lost my joie de vivre, so I hit out. I'm sorry I hit him, but it done me good at the time. I see. Well, you'll have to go to prison for four months. Four months? I'm giving you four months partly to let you have a chance of thinking things over. Try and do better when you come out. Do better? I will. I'll go in for a new job altogether. A new job, Your Worship. Blind, blind, help the blind, blind, help a poor old blind fellow, please, sir, blind, blind. Charlie. Oh, hello, Libby. Oh, Charlie, Charlie, what's happened to you? Selling pencils now, see? But, but you're right. Oh, Charlie. Very nice to see you, Libby. You're looking very nice, too. What? I like your dress. It's a very nice colour. Charlie, you're a faker. Shh, shh, shh. You can see as well as I can. Oh, don't and talk so loud, Libby. Shh, shh, don't you come along with me to my dressing room at the theatre. I'll deal with oh, you. No, no, no. I'm ashamed of you, I am. I leave behind me a respectable busker, and what do I find? A bilker. Whining for charity. I didn't, I wasn't, but today was the first time. That's your story. I tell you, I did it for a lark. I only come out last week. Out of what? The hospital? Clink. Prison? You? Oh, so you couldn't even fool the police, Oh, eh? Libby, you haven't got his right. I have got his right. Here I slave and toil to give you credit, and what sort of credit do you do me? You've been a jailbird, you haven't shaved for a week, and you've been cheating the public, and you've been drinking. Oh, Libby, you didn't leave me much else to do, did you? You proved to me I was a washout. Oh, how can you tell such lies? You did, Libby. Charles, dear old Charles, what have you got into your head? I never said it, and I never thought it. You did, Libby. Oh, well, if I did, it was because I lost my temper. And I learned that from you. Oh, Charles, dear Charles, you, you've paid me back for what I did to you. Just, just seeing you like this. No, 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 ease up. Go back to your job. Go on. Be, be Charles again. Libby, could I have a small drink? How long has this been going on? How long has what been going These on? These small drinks of yours. I don't know. Well, well, it's got to stop, see? Oh, Charles. Oh. Turn no. round. I know. Turn round no. talk to me. Oh, Charles. Look. Look, now, there's, there's a couple of small parts going in the new show. Eh? And if you can play, play a blind man well enough to fool me for half a second... Oh, you, you admit it, do you? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Now, look, what about coming down to rehearsal and showing them all what you can do, eh? Oh, well, oh, re re rehearsal? Me in a show, understand? Well, why not? Well, you well, be somebody then. Well, somebody instead of nobody. The things a bit... Maybe the... Oh, uh, only... Only uh, nothing. You come down, come down and show them. Charlie. Well, Libby, the, the, there ain't anything I could do. Why? Not suitable. Of course there is. What about um, Green Eye? I'm off Green Eye. Um, well, what about if, Charles? Dear old Charlie, what about if? Well, uh, I haven't done it for a long time. Why, it's easy. I know it. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. Easy, if easy, you can easy. Oh, easy, easy. That ain't the way to. Do it, my gal. You've got to get him in the mood from the first word, see? You want attack. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you and make allowance for their doubt. If you can wait but not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies or being hated. Don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good, nor talk too wise. Harley. If you can dream, Harley. but not make he isn't dream too your bad, heart out. Is he? If you can Darling, think, but he's not very make bad. thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster, and treat those two impostors just the same. If you can bear to hear, the truth you've spoken, hey, twisted my name, sort of thing, 
to make a trap Why of don't fools. Why don't give him a chance? Or watch the things you gave your life to! Frederick. Frederick. Uh, and stoop and build him up. He's worn out, too. If you can... No. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and you'll risk it on one turn of pitch and toss. Hey, Tommy, bring me a cup of coffee when you come back, will you? And lose. And lose. And lose. Go on, Tom. Lose. What you say, dear? And start again. What, dear? Start again, darling. Start again? Start again at your beginnings. Never breathe a word about your loss. And if you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, and so hold on, there's nothing, nothing can Except the will which says to me, Hold on! Now look here, darling, it isn't any good. They can't make an actor out of me. I've been outside too long. Well, <laughs> I'm a basker, see? It's all right, dear, don't worry about me. I'm all right, dear. Now, look here, Libby. Oh. You don't need me, dear. Oh. You're a great performer. Will you go inside where oh. you belong? I belong outside. And Libby, here, here, here. You marry that nice young fellow. He's a very nice young fellow he is. And Libby, I'd like to tell you something. I ain't 39. I am 40. Oh, Charlie. Charlie, please. <laughs> Don't go. No, 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 no. Oh, dear, dear, you're a silly little coot, aren't you? You always was. Oh, stop hugging me. <laughs> now, look here, you've got to behave, you know, because of the public. Now, goodbye, Libby. You'll be all right, old girl. Keep a chin up. You'll be all right. Goodbye, Libby. Gentry. Charlie! Charlie! You're still at the old act, eh? Well, will you cut it short, boys? There won't be time for me. Well, start in now, Charlie. Start in now. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you. Well, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I will now recite to you a poem first made famous by Mr. Bransby Williams, since recited on various occasions by Sir John Martin Harvey, Mr. John Gilgood, <laughs> and myself. The Green Eye of the Little Yellow God by Milton Ames. There's a and now Charles Lawton and Elsa Lanchester say goodbye to the sidewalks of London and return to our footlights. Miss Lanchester, do you think Charlie would really be able to make a living as a busker? Well, Mr. DeMille, with a little encouragement, I think he would have disguised himself and tried his hand at it. Now, look here, less of this ribbing. I might have done very well. I had expert coaching in passing the hat from some of London's finest buskers, you know. Yes, sir. <laughs> After your performance tonight, Charlie, I'd advise you to pass a big hat. Thank you, C.B. We've waited a long time, Miss Lanchester, for your debut at this microphone. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. The Lux Radio Theatre may be new to me, but Lux Soap isn't. I've seen it very often backstage in the London theatres. You know, working on the stage during the foggy London winters, one has to be very careful of one's complexion, of course, and that's why I have used, and do use, Lux soap. And now I'd like to ask you a question. All right, shoot. Didn't I see Carol Lombard's name on the rehearsal schedule for next week? <laughs> You're only telling half of it. Carol Lombard and Fred McMurray next Monday night. 
Bring us Made for Each Other, with Carol in the same role she played in the David O. Selznick picture. Made for Each Other is an exciting romantic story about an average young married couple, and Carol Lombard and Fred McMurray were made for these parts in Made for Each Other. I saw that picture, CB. It should be a marvelous show. It's time now, Charlie, for the special feature we've planned for tonight. One of the things everyone remembers about your performance in Ruggles of Red Gap on the screen and on this stage is the impressive way you gave Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Today is Abraham Lincoln's birthday, and I ask you to do it again now as our memorial tribute to him. Well, see, I'm a little bit husky, but I'll do my best at it. <coughs> Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. We are now engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are now on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate. We cannot consecrate. We cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far beyond our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here. But it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom. And that government of the people, by the people, and for the people, shall not perish from the earth. The words of Lincoln mean more than ever in times like these. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Carol Lombard and Fred McMurray in Made for Each Other. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. This week marks the anniversary of the Boy Scouts of America. Today, more than ever before, we need the spirit typified by this great organization. And so, on their 31st anniversary, we salute the Boy Scouts of America. The picture, Sidewalks of London, starring Charles Lawton and Vivian Lee, is now being released by Paramount. It was produced by Eric Palmer and directed by Tim Whalen. Miss Lee made this picture just before coming to Hollywood to appear in Gone with the Wind. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Roy. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.